Hello guys, my name is Trollmaker Tamplan TVP. I'm the Terran and uh, person, it's a very nice generic name, is the Prokoss. And what I've been doing in my attempt to climb back to Masters after being thwarted into Platinum via the, the random, you know, placement system, I don't know. I'm going to try and get back into Masters by doing 12 minute, well 12 to 18 minute pushes in TVP. Now, the background behind this, if you haven't been following, uh, Terrans have the highest win rate between 12 and 18 minutes. Between 12 and 18 minutes, Terrans win most often. So if you have a really big, really powerful push, somewhere between the 12 and 18 minute marker, that hits on the 12 and 18 minute marker, you have a really good chance of winning. The chances of a Terran winning between 12 and 18 minutes is something insane, like 76, 77 percent. So you got, you know, three to four chances of winning. You'll win three or four of your games by doing a big, big push. Now the goal here is just kind of play the game where we're going to do a big push, do insane amounts of damage, and macro behind it. And the idea is that he should leave as soon as the push does the damage and he gets behind. And you are just going to continue the macro up and not play catch up, but um, keep keep ahead. You can just kind of throw units at him at that point. Um, so, no, my name is Trollmaker. This is a 13 Rex, by the way. Very high econ barracks this is. Um, it allows me, like, you know, moments of extra mining. It gives you about 16 extra minerals, so no biggie, but just a small thing. Um, I scattered this way. I saw he was coming. He came to base fairly quickly. Like, he was here before my barracks came down, so I know he's here. He's either here or here. Nobody scouts cross pattern. That's stupid. Um, he's going pretty standard opening gateway. Simulators, you know, a pylon and a cyber core. Uh, I'm going to be doing... And I finally perfected it. I'll be doing a uh, tank push with Marines and Medivacs off of two base. And I think it'll be pretty good. And so we're just going to speed this along, get to the actual build. Um, so, okay, things. I built one Marine. I built my command center. I'm not going to continue building Marines. This is normally bad macro, but for this build it's necessary. We're going to continue pumping up those SCBs. They're the important ones. And we're going to get our supply depot. And then we can start queuing up Marines. Of course, we're supply blocked. And we'll remain supply blocked. And we'll be, you know, fending off anything that comes this way with just one Marine. It's a little bit greedy. I've been punished in the past a little bit for this. But you can hold off pretty much everything with, like, a bunch of SCVs and Marines. If you get really good at SCV micro, um, you can actually just destroy Zealots. And I've been doing that quite effectively. Uh, so we're getting down the double gas. As soon as we can afford it. After the supply veto is down. After the command center is down. And double gas will get us our tanks. Um, so we'll speed this back up. He's trying to scout here. We're going to just get pick up everything. The one, the one marine's definitely not enough to deny scouting. But we don't care. We don't care because we're doing a non-standard play. Something that people don't do in North America. It's become more common in uh, in Korea with uh, because MPP did it. Uh, Ghost King Prime did it with a lot of success. And so it's a little bit of a different thing. Tech lab on the barracks. We're getting stim burst. Then we have, after we get the, as soon as you get the factory down, you drop a tech lab on the barracks. You start on stim, and then you have factory gets dropped down. Get a tech lab, and if you do this this gas timing specifically, you'll have exactly enough gas for all of it. You get the third gas, and you lay down a starport. The third gas will afford all of your uh, what are they called? Um, Medivacs. So we have a high ground tank here. This is a great position. He's going to have a ring right here. Uh, it depends on what your, your enemy wants to do. Like He's got uh, four gates out here. So he's not, he's not he's not something very aggressive. Uh, my SE came and scouted four um, sentries. And so four sentries tells you one of two things. One, he's going to play a very aggressive uh, six gate with high sentry count, which he force fields your bunkers and just crushes you. And I, I think, I don't know if I scanned by this point or not. I think I scanned. Not yet, no. Okay, I will scan, though. And I just want to see what he's doing. Because if he's doing a 6 gate, I'm going to leave this tank unseeged and kind of bait him into it. I want him to attack me. Because tanks will tear apart that 6 gate so fast. But we're just going to have him positioned for now. And the second that we scan, whenever that comes, we'll, you know, 
choose whether these tanks are going to siege or not. Um, baiting can be very important. I mean, I don't have a lot of marine count, but the, the siege tanks will actually cover, like, such a massive area. Um, so what we're doing here, getting down more barracks, is ramp three racks, one pack, and uh, starport. Now we're come to this decision point. Do we move out? There is a money scan, and I see Twilight Council. I see Forge. I see four gateways. So what this tells me is that he's going for a heavy, heavy upgrade path. So I'm not going to push. Well, I'm not gonna if you're investing a lot in tech, that means you're really not going to be able to afford expansions. You can see his money's quite low because he's investing very quickly in a lost stuff. He doesn't get charged, which is kind of weird. Um, so we're going to do a little push. We are now at the uh, 9 minute, 29 minute mark. This push is actually coming too early. And we'll see what happens when you don't do a 12 minute push. This is with stem, siege tanks, marines. Um, you know, in the future I'll pay more attention to my timings. Looking at the units lost tab, we'll get a good look. Keep in mind I'm already 50 ahead. And keep in mind I actually have an inferior army size right now. I pull quite a far ahead. Tanks are actually pretty good. But keep in mind, uh, if I would have waited probably about two minutes, I would have just killed. And so he's pulling all of the probes, he's going to fall behind. And um, But, you know, this timing was a little bit off. I could actually kill him. That's how weak he was playing. And, uh, you know, all the probe costs are down bad. Uh, Sea Tank trying to pick up as many of these as possible. Um, Unfortunately, my medevac was healing this SCV, which was building his bunker, which is actually insane. I, uh, the medevac can actually outheal the sentry, which is just weird. Uh, this keeps him on the defensive, though, so that kind of works out my advantage, but, you know, I could have killed him. So, unfortunately, I have a bad rally here. You're going to lose a few units. No biggie. Uh, response to this is drop down a command center. I think I'm actually going to double expand, because when you have someone against the ropes like this, and he's really against the ropes, and he's really far behind right now, but I'm going to you know, get these guys out of here. That's all he's going to do. Uh, yeah, I, I, I traded decently, pretty effectively, uh, looking at the income. You know, it's... it's A Protoss should always be ahead on Harvesters, just because of Chrono. And he's got them, the Templars, because he's got the Templar Archives. So this is what I call a decently standard Protoss response. This is usually how Protoss is played against um, heavy marine play. But I'm doing marine tank, which is totally different. It's something that Protoss just aren't very good at dealing with yet. And um, that works out very advantageously. So I got one command center, two command centers. I'm doing a double expand. Which means that my units will be behind quite a bit. But it's okay, because Templars are actually really expensive. Uh, I want to Templar, 50 minerals, 150 gas, right? And he's actually not spending a lot effectively on his Templars. He's getting a lot of Zealots. And, you know, like, tanks are in good positions. They can hit a decent arc. They can actually, four tanks will one-shot a Stalker. We're getting this one into a, an Orbital. And this one will transform. Down here is our Sneaky Expansion. Sneaky Expansions are good. I have this Marine chipping away at these destructible rocks. This is for later. You know, you got to plan in the future. The faster these rocks go down, the better. Um... I'm going to pretend right now that I don't want him to see this expansion. As in, like, oh, he picked up an expansion. And when a person picks up one expansion, what do you do? You take your own expansion, you cut down your own units, and you don't push. And this is, uh, like, I, I don't want to say this is a bit higher level of play, but it's definitely a mind trick. Because, you know, as far as he knows, he knows there's, like, going to be one base here, but he's not going to move this one. So it's... It's a pretty smart play. I'm just going to move this one to where he thinks this one is, so that if he does, in fact, put an observer there in the future, um, he won't know about it. So he's got all his units on some weird pathing thing. Jigger. He's going to build his expansion so he can keep in the game. I am, in fact, ahead on supply. I think a lot of it supplies actually SCBs, right? Uh, no, he's actually ahead on that, too. But whatever. We're going to put a marauder break in these. Marauders, I believe, do bonus damage versus buildings and armored. Yeah. They're armored. All buildings are armored. Just in case you were wondering. Uh, sneak expansion will become an orbital. Why not? If you, uh, like if it was turned to a fortress, it wouldn't change anything at all. You know, it might it might do a little more damage, but this will bank out faster. Uh, I'm dropping down a lot of raxes. There will be going right here. I'm getting the double ups because I got I gotta stay on the double ups. 
He's only got the 1-1. One, one. We're going to get the 1-1, one, one, so we'll be even. And um, pushing a little further ahead. Looking at the time, we're at 15 minutes, 37 seconds. So I got to attack pretty soon. And that's what this is all about. I'm just trying to prep an attack. Um, I've done a, you know, four times expand, trying to keep myself in the game. And it's, you know, it's saturating slowly. And I look at his army size, and what does he have? He has high Templars, a lot of Zealots, and a lot of Stalkers. That's a very bad build for heavy amounts of Marines, Siege Tanks, and uh, Marauders. So, just throwing this little bit out there. If you are a Terran playing against high amounts of Templars, Siege Tanks do actually really well. Siege Tanks can pick off high Templars so well. So here comes moving with the high Templar. And our lesson today really is storm dodging. So, like... He storms here, because that's where my units were. Now, what we're going to actually watch here is these units in the back. Every time these units in the back move forward, that means he's going to storm. So he's moving back, and they move forward, and now we know he's going to storm. So when you're in these big battles, keep your eye on these. Storm. Right? He's going to storm. So you want to you move away. Uh, you got a big storm off there. That was my bad. And you got double storm. That's no biggie. The double storm was actually a waste. He's got one Templar left with enough energy. He's got two storms left. Um, I, I was trying to stim in and pick it off, but whatever. I cleaned up the rest of his units. Um, he's probably a little bit confused why I have such a big friggin' army, and his is so small. I do get the one base ahead of his, but I also get the second base ahead of his, and they're all orbitals. So, like, this is, you know, the big Terran advantage. So I'm going to pick off these rocks which is, you know, future game. We're at the 18 minute mark, the point where I won, and guess what? I won. I killed his entire army at the 18 minute marker. So, you know, it's a theory holding true. Can Terrans just win all the time between 12 and 18 minutes? 75% of the time, I will win between this marker. Uh, Protoss, I think my win-loss rate is something insane, like 95, 96%. Keep in mind, I am playing Platinum games, so like it's nothing like, darp, 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 he's good. It's more along the lines of like, you know, I'm playing against people who aren't as good as me, and I'm also doing tactics that are designed for a much higher level player. Um, you know, my 2-2 two -two should finish up any time now, by the way. So I'm pretty far ahead. Three base versus two now. Um, you know, it's kind of like a lesson for other opponents. Not to be a dick, but when this is happening to you, you quit. He's at 60 supply versus 173. All of my barracks are finally powered up. I have tons of cash in the bank. I can get the 3-3. Three, three. I'm picking up pylons because, honestly, he doesn't have a lot of pylons. He, at this point, we should quit. When, like, it's not just this army you have to deal with, but also, like, this coming extension of an army. I'm going to pick up this. I don't want him getting more Colossus. That's just awful. He's got a second one. He's going for the, the really lame double Colossus build. He's got some high temps here. Um, you know, trying to get some energy up. Just get the energy just in time. Uh, this particular combination is pretty brutal. And uh, we're going to see a little more uh, attempt at storm dodging. So I just want to back up so I can see him into this Colossus. Some people like to do some split skins Colossus. But when it's only the one, you can actually just run into it. Uh, you get the storm off. At this point, it's kind of like I'm lofty dying in this phase. Uh, looking back here, macro staying pretty good. Pumping out units, they're not rallied. I actually accidentally changed my hotkey. I usually use four for barracks. I accidentally hit it into a unit, so I stopped producing from these things for a while. But that's fine. 174 supply to a plummeting 48 anchor game. So yeah, lesson of the day is definitely storm dodging. Um, you know, just to see this real quick from the Troublemaker camera. Where's like our big battle? We were, it was like probably around what, say, 16 minutes was the big battle? I'll say it's around 16 minutes. I'm in deep. Um, a little more after that. Sixteen minutes sounds it right for the big battle. Okay, so yep, this is probably about it. We're picking up the rocks. So just kind of get down this, uh, like, you, you have to build it now, you understand how that works. Um, keep in mind, you only get the four tanks. You will eventually swap the tank for a barracks, and you'll stop building tanks. You only need four tanks. Four tanks can kill, uh, can kill stalkers. One tank kills high Templar. There's just enough DPS here. You don't need to upgrade them. And so, you know, just simple things. Siege one in the back. Siege one up here to get the high ground area. 
see some along the axes and you know looking at this really quickly high tempo are moving forward and this is just my vision ran away so I ran away you know he's doing a lot of damage to these tanks but the tanks are doing a lot of damage back uh, you know high tempo moving forward move back every single time do it like clockwork high templars moving forward run away even if he does not storm it is worthwhile to run away stim if you have to uh, little misstep on my part there but this is just good uh, micro habits and you know everyone says like macro is the key to getting into diamond that's definitely true uh, the key to getting into uh, masters is going to be good decision making skills as in micro on the spot and uh, strong unit compositions that crush and this is definitely one that crushes 18 minute mark army dead so thank you guys for watching my name is troublemaker and join me again next time i'll be doing more of climb the ladder see you then so we're going to make some first we're going to take the blunt of the day